Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of AFC Wimbledon, who today are taking on Liverpool at Anfield in the FA Cup. It's winner go home, and we're taking on arguably the best team in the history of the world, Liverpool Football Club. Look at Anfield. God, is there a more beautiful stadium? Than, uh, it just fills, it fills my heart with incredibly complicated emotions. I'm joyful because Wimbledon is now good enough to be playing Liverpool, obviously. I'm also remembering the late 1980s when Liverpool uh, was the best team in the world and they lost to Wimbledon in the FA Cup final. Probably the biggest upset in FA Cup history. Also, I'm sad because I don't want to have to beat Liverpool. I love Simon Mignolet. I love Coutinho. None of these players play for us anymore. But I, uh, Jordan Henderson. But whatever. I, this is, it's going to be difficult to, to, to beat these guys, you know? They are... Uh, they are great men. This is a great football club. But we also have a great football club. We've got Dicko and Dini, the odd couple, up front. We've got the golden child in the center of midfield, as well as Les Moore, which I believe to be the right amount of Moore. And then we've got Dima Shellis and Rocker in the back, and Seb Brown, of course, as he is in all of our knockout competitions, uh, playing, um, playing goalkeeper. Meredith, what is the topic for today? Did we decide upon one? We should. We should have a topic, other than, uh, other than the glory Oh, that was not a great moment for a pass, Dicko. John Green, I don't like to brag, but ball John Green in that situation, 10 times out of 10, chooses not to pass. Oh, boy. That was a, not, that was a necessary slide tackle, my least favorite kind. Golden child on the ball. Golden child on the ball. Golden child on the ball. Cutting it back. Oh, the golden child making people look silly. Oh. Pass. Yes. Pass. Yes. Shoot. Oh, it's a goal! Oh! Les Moore! He scores with his left. He scores with his right. That Les Moore makes some more look shite. Oh, what a goal. Meredith, there was so much passing that led to that goal. And then Simon Mignolet could not handle the pace of the ball. What's our topic? We still don't have one. Retirement advice? Yes! I know so many, I know so many Wimbly Wombly supporters are on the edge of retirement. And I, of course, also on the edge of retirement is the perfect topic. Thank you, Meredith. Just when I thought, like, maybe I should fire Meredith as the assistant manager and get an assistant manager who's good at FIFA. I'm reminded that Meredith's gifts to this program are about more than FIFA. They're also about retirement advice. I have tons of retirement advice. Meredith knows this. You guys don't. Uh, I spend a tremendous amount of time thinking and talking about retirement. I am obsessed with retiring. I want to retire as soon as possible and as dramatically as possible. Um, yeah, so my biggest piece of retirement advice, having now had my parents retire, oh, look at Wes Moore. He's rampaging. He's a rampager. He's rampaging into the box. It's not a bad ball to Dicko! Oh! I was fouled, right? I was fouled. That was a smidge offside. Probably should have gone with the Y button there, maybe. I don't know what I did wrong. Maybe an earlier, maybe an earlier A? Maybe that was a moment for an early A instead of, a, instead of an old-fashioned X. Um, yeah, I guess, like, uh, my biggest piece of retirement advice I is this. Uh, first off, you should retire um, when you can, if you can. Um, and then you should, you should have something that you do in retirement that brings you joy. For my dad, um, you know, my dad retired after after working for many years in uh, he he worked uh, some in real estate, mostly in like land conservation, and uh, he worked for the Nature Conservancy for a long time. Oh, what a goal that could have been! Um, and um, he retired uh, when they moved to North Carolina about ten years ago, and then uh, he began working full time running uh, our business. Hank and Hank and me's like all of our business stuff. Uh, that we ha had to do, you know, like having to figure out taxes and uh, how to incorporate and all that stuff. And it started out just like he was doing it as a favor for us, and then it became like a real job. And then he was working like more hours than he'd ever worked in his entire life. And then he just like last year, he re-retired um, because he was so tired of doing like DFTBA records, payroll and everything. So he re-retired. But even in his re-retirement, he's finding lots of stuff to do um, a lot of it's working with us, but um, I think it's just good to have something to do. Like my mom is really is a great painter and also makes goat goat soap. For those of you who don't know, she has goats and she she and uh, 
Her friend Molly used the uh, milk from the goats to make goat milk soap that I have to say, and I know that I am biased as her son, but it's amazing stuff, this goat, this Farmer Jane goat's milk soap. You can look it up on the internet. But they mostly sell it at, like, local farmer's markets. They have DFTBA goat's milk soap, but they almost never advertise it because they only, they only like to make a certain number of soap bars per year, and they, they, uh, they, they sell the DFTBA ones too quickly. I'm not, not great business people necessarily in the strictest sense, but... Um, uh, but yeah, they just really, they're, it's, it's just, it's really cool. And like, it also, you know, it, it reflects my parents' values of, um, you know, being good stewards of, uh, livestock and trying to use lots of, uh, you know, trying to use their goats in as many ways as possible and, but still to treat them well and everything. Um, anyway, yeah. So like, that's one thing that my parents do. That's a good opportunity, but you didn't score. You didn't score from that good opportunity. I'm disappointed in you. All right. Um, that's one thing I'd say. But the other thing I'd say is uh, part of the reason that my, you know, my parents are able to ha have this great retirement, because um, God knows Hank and I aren't helping them. We are philosophically opposed to it. I believe in the Ayn Randian vision that if you can't uh, take care of yourself, then uh, your, your kids shouldn't take care of you for you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but my parents did a great job of saving for retirement. They saved their whole, um, they saved their whole careers. Um, it was a really important part of their... Um, of their lives to save for retirement and also like they always they taught us like like my dad helped me open up a uh, 401k when i worked at steak and shake um or not a 401k what's it called a uh, an ira when i worked at steak and shake and i just thought it was the most ridiculous thing because i was so mad at having to give up like you know 10 percent of my steak oh god <laughs> seb brown seb brown he just took out three men to save the ball seb brown cares about the ball in a way that regular people just can't and that's it, that's halftime. Les Moore scores a goal. We're up 1-0 in the FA Cup against Liverpool, away from home. Think of all the money that we're making right now, Meredith. Just look at that full Anfield Stadium. My God, it's a beautiful thing to see. That's a great goal, too. Great goal. You got to say Simon Mignolet should have done a little bit more there, but still a great goal. Um, yeah, so I, uh, my parents did a really good job saving for retirement and encouraging good saving habits in us. It's incredibly hard to save because... Um, it's it, it's really really hard to say no to stuff that you want um, or or stuff that your kids want. I mean, I think about that a lot with my parents. Like, my parents were it, it really really financially conservative, um, and uh, at the time, like sometimes it would like sometimes when I was a kid, it would annoy me that like there was stuff that my my, my friends had that I couldn't have or um, stuff that you know like my my, my you know like that we we didn't like I don't know we like moved to a different house and stuff and like. I don't know. I just always wanted. I just always wanted to like uh, keep keep up with the proverbial Joneses, some of whom in my neighborhood were actually named the Joneses. But anyway, um, we, uh, you know, like my. But I didn't understand at the time that my parents were were you know giving me a tremendous gift by making sure that they were saving for retirement, so that when um, when their retire when it came time for their retirement, that they that I wouldn't have to um, to worry about that as an adult. And that certainly has been a, a great gift to me. Um, so I think, like, uh, that's another thing. That's something that, that Sarah and I try to do. Like, we try to save very aggressively so that, um, you know, hopefully we, we won't be, um, we won't make things difficult for, or harder than necessary for uh, Henry and Alice. Um, uh, yeah. So that's, I don't know. That's my retirement advice, basically. Save aggressively uh, and have a hobby in retirement or a passion. Like, the great thing about retirement to me is that it allows you to, like, live your passions. And frankly, like, Hank always says that when I, when I talk about retirement, Hank is always like, well, I am retired. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm already retired. I'm doing all the things I want to do. And um, that's kind of true for Hank. Like, I, I don't think Hank would act any, like, I don't think Hank would live any differently um, if money were not a concern. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think Hank would change his life at all if he won the lottery tomorrow, um, which I find totally fascinating. There are things about my life I would change, but there are a lot I wouldn't. I ha oh, wow, that was, I was almost away on goal. Oh, man, that was almost a beautiful 70-yard run for a goal, but then it didn't happen. Like, so much effort in this world, it came to nothing. Um, pass. Good pass. Shoot. Oh, I was offside. Time to make some substitutions. I was barely offside for the record. Man, I'm so – I have such a mixed bag. I'm so poor at the offside rule. Um, yeah, so, like, I, I mean, I guess, like, in a perfect world, if you're lucky, like, uh, you'll like what you do enough that it won't seem, you know, it won't seem that different to, like, you, you, it won't seem that different to retire. Like, 
because uh, you'll still get to do some version of it. But like, I guess what I would what I would like to retire from um, is the feeling of uh, like that I'm gonna let my family down or myself down or, or people I care about down by um, by taking time away from work or by by not pushing as hard as I can. Um, you know, have you ever noticed that D. Michelis has no teeth, Meredith? It's one of the weirder things about him. He's a toothless man. Um, it's just it's just a big black gaping hole when he opens his mouth. You you you, you can look all the way into the abyss, um, and and you see there what happens if you don't do a good job planning for retirement. No, the other thing, I, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, yeah, I'm a big, but I am like, I'm also like a very like kind of conservative-ish person when it comes to money and uh, try not to like, you know, Sarah and I have always tried really hard to to live well within our means and um, and all that stuff. So I don't know. I, I, maybe maybe my advice is like kind of kind of silly. I don't know. I'm doing. I'm just doing my best. Meredith gave me this topic. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I, I worried a lot about my parents in retirement because, like, b for both of them, their work was a huge part of their identity. Like, my, you know, my dad, um, you know, being a, a kind of professional environmentalist, I guess, is a huge part of my dad's life. And then for my mom, you know, being a community organizer was such a huge part of her life and working with, um, especially with, with young young women who would, uh, were in uh, either... At times, she worked at, with young women who were victims of domestic violence. At times, she worked with... Uh, with women who were uh, at risk or, or lived in um, uh, communities that uh, didn't didn't offer adequate uh, care and resources to students or to young mothers, um, and like you know, she tried to she tried to be part of fixing that and be part of fixing uh, you know getting getting better services to communities that are that were neglected by Central Florida, and then when they or like by the local governments in Central Florida. And then when they moved, I was really worried about them because I was like, oh, man, like, this is who they are. This is their identity. And, like, what are they going to do now? Oh! Oh, Wimbly Wombly scored a goal and Dicko was his name. Oh, D-I-C-K-O, D-I-C-K-O, D-I-C-K-O. And Dicko was his name. Oh, it's a wonderful moment for the Wimbly Womblies as they go up 2-0 against Liverpool in the FA Cup. We're moving on in the FA Cup, ladies and gentlemen, and we are still undefeated in the year 2017. Some people call it our honest Mirabalis, our year of miracles. Oh, 2017, the greatest year of all. We are still unbeaten, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, man. Anyway, I was worried about my parents, but then it turned out they really enjoyed retirement because they found passions and they got to do the stuff that they love and in a way be more efficient because they didn't have to worry about getting paid for it as much. Thank you for watching. We won the game. Sorry, Liverpool. I love you guys. I love you so much. I'm so sorry. Oh, God, I hate to see you like this. I'm so sorry. Oh, it breaks my heart. I'm sorry. Simon Minule. I'm so sorry. Oh, but at least we won. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.